Coronavirus has had a big impact on all our lives around the world. But can our guinea pigs be affected? I'm Monique from Guinea Piggles and today I'm going to be talking to Daniela Dos Santos from the British Veterinary Association. Hi Daniela and thank you for speaking to us today. Can you firstly tell us what do the BVA do? So the British Veterinary Association is the largest membership body for the veterinary community in the UK. So we have over 18,000 members and we exist to support, champion and develop the profession. So what that means is we offer support to vets in terms of their career and, and things like that. But we're also there to champion the veterinary profession. So we're there to do things like this and go out and talk to people about what vets do, why we do it and help improve animal welfare as well. How has the virus affected normal vet services? So COVID-19, as for every other industry in the world, has brought some real challenges for the veterinary profession. But actually, I'm really proud of the profession because despite having to adapt to various changes, we've been there throughout helping make sure that pets and other animals like farm animals are really well looked after and, you know, we're maintaining our food safe. So there are things that have changed. So we obviously, as everyone else, have to maintain social distancing, for example. And so in small animal practices, things look slightly different. Um, some practices at the moment aren't allowing people into the practice because they can't safely keep that distance. So we're asking people to call ahead to their practice to find out you know, how things are working and to also respect how the practice has chosen to do things because all practices are different. Some are small, some are large, some have multiple doors, some may have staff members that are particularly vulnerable. So for some cases, you know, they, you're staying outside in your cars or in the car park and the vet will come out, take your pet and then call you and discuss it that way. For some others where there's big waiting rooms and big consulting rooms, they're in a situation where you can come in because we can maintain social distancing. So all we're asking is please be a little bit patient. We're doing our best to keep ourselves and you safe and be there for your pets as well. We've all heard that there's been a few cases of COVID-19 reported in cats and dogs recently. Can you elaborate on this? So across the world through this pandemic, we have seen a small handful of cases where pets have contracted COVID-19. And what we need to take into account is that this is an extremely rare occurrence and actually in all those cases, it has been a situation where the pet has caught the coronavirus from the owner. So it's all been in cases where owners have tested positive for COVID-19 and passed it on to their pets. It's really, really important to emphasise that all the pets involved, if they have shown clinical signs, have made a full recovery. And not all of them have shown clinical signs. And there is no evidence at the moment that pets are playing a role in the transmission of disease. So that there's no evidence that pets are passing it back to humans the main mode of transmission remains human to human. So yes, there's a small number of cases out there, but absolutely no need to panic. They don't appear to be, you know, perpetuating the spread. And it has all been cases where they've caught it from their owners. Have there been any cases reported yet of guinea pigs catching COVID-19? So there haven't been any cases of, of guinea pigs catching it actually. And um, we've seen some cats, some of which have shown signs. We've seen dogs. Um, which haven't shown signs and there's been an example of a tiger, it's some tigers in, in the United States for example, but guinea pigs haven't shown any signs. Guinea pigs are prone to respiratory illnesses, so does this have any risks for them long term? So you're right, guinea pigs are prone to respiratory illnesses, but I think we need to sort of take a step back and, and look at what's actually happening. There are no cases that we know of of guinea pigs contracting the virus. And even those cases in cats and dogs that we know of has been through close contact to humans that have tested positive. So I think it's difficult to answer that question because at the moment there's no evidence they can even catch it. And, and so we don't want anybody to panic. Um, we just want everybody to take the normal precautions that we have been told to take all along when it comes to our own health. Could guinea pigs possibly spread the disease without being affected themselves? So it's an interesting question about whether um, animals, and let's just start with the animals, whether animals can spread the disease. I think the honest answer is there's no evidence of animals directly spreading the disease to humans, which is what I was referring to about the main route of transmission being human to human. So we are not seeing pets who have become infected then infecting humans, if that makes sense. Now, 
The one thing we need to take into account is a guinea pig, like anything else, could act as a surface. This is a very new virus, so we don't have all the evidence out there. But if we're looking at a precautionary principle, it could be possible that your guinea pig's fur could act as a surface. Having said that, again, there's no reason to panic because what it comes down to is about good hygiene practices. Um, and so please don't panic. Don't suddenly abandon your guinea pigs or decide not to stroke them anymore. No need to whatsoever. They are no more risk to you than, say, going on a supermarket shop, for example, and picking up some groceries from the shelf. And what if the owner tests positive for the virus? So if an owner has symptoms of COVID-19 or test positive for COVID-19, if you have pets, it is sensible to avoid unnecessary contact. Now, what that means is it comes back to the same principles that we've been saying all throughout the pandemic. Hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. So wash your hands at regular intervals. If you're coughing or sneezing, try and catch it into a tissue and dispose of it straight away and wash your hands. And when I say avoid unnecessary contact with your pets, what I mean is, of course, you have to have contact with them, for example, to feed them. But just remember, wash your hands before and wash your hands after. And what this comes back to is it comes back to the point that actually we have no evidence they pose any risk to us. But there is a slight chance that we could pose a risk to them. So what's really important is we practice good hygiene. And if you do have COVID-19 symptoms, avoid unnecessary contact with them. So what's a step by step advice for owners and their pets staying safe during the pandemic? So there are two strands to how we would advise people to keep themselves and their pets safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. So first of all, when it comes to vet care, please call ahead. Call your practice before you just turn up and speak to them on the phone about your concerns and they will advise you. And they'll also advise you on how they are approaching seeing pets. It might be you end up with a telephone or video consult. It might be that they say to you, well, come down and you'll wait in the car park and we'll take the pet from you and we will speak to you over the phone. It may be that you are allowed into the premises, but by law, you now have to wear masks in, in veterinary practices. So when it comes to seeking veterinary care, what we ask is to follow all the safety measures put in place by the practice and respect them. And that is about keeping you and your vet and their team safe. Now, the other strand of this is how do you keep your pets safe? Now, I don't want to alarm anybody. There has only been a handful of cases where animals have contracted COVID-19. And if we think about how many people have contracted COVID-19 and how many of those that will have had pets, that is an infinitely small number, but it is sensible to be careful. So if you have COVID-19 symptoms or you have been diagnosed with COVID-19, practice good hygiene and avoid unnecessary contact with your pets. Wash your hands frequently, catch all coughs and sneezes in the tissue and dispose of them immediately. If appropriate, wear a face mask, but just avoid that unnecessary contact and practice good hygiene. Thanks so much for your time today, Daniela. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. So there doesn't seem to be much of a problem for our pets at the moment. I've put a link to the BVA's online advice in the description below. Have fun with your piggies and I'll see you in the next video.